a desolate chamber buried deep beneath the sands of Rajasthan yields a secret never meant to see the light. Inside a sealed urn, untouched for over 4,000 years, lies a substance so pristine, so well preserved, that it defies time itself. Ancient DNA extracted from human remains unlike any ever seen. The genetic signature, not just rare, but completely absent from modern databases. The discovery sends shockwaves through the scientific community and something strange happens. For years, this DNA vanishes from public view. Research papers are pulled. Funding is frozen. The story is buried until now. Why was this DNA hidden for so long? Who were these people? Whose blood holds answers to a forgotten chapter of human history? And most importantly, what truth does this ancient code finally reveal about the true origin of India? India, a land of vast temples, lost cities, and ancient empires. But beneath the myths and monuments lies a deeper enigma, one that has puzzled historians for centuries. Where did the first Indians come from? Were they native to this soil? Or did their ancestors migrate from distant lands? For decades, theories have clashed. The Aryan migration theory, the out of India hypothesis, and countless interpretations of ancient texts have fueled debates from lecture halls to parliament floors. But what if all of them were only pieces of a much larger puzzle? In 2018, archaeologists unearthed a burial site at Rakagari, one of the largest settlements of the Indus Valley civilization. Over 40 human skeletons were found, dating back to nearly 2600 BCE, but something made this excavation different. Scientists extracted intact DNA from one female skeleton, a discovery previously thought impossible in India's harsh climate. What they found didn't match expectations. It rewrote timelines, and it threatened long-held national narratives. The question grew louder. Why would such a crucial discovery be silenced? It started with bone dust, fine particles brushed gently from an ancient skull in Rakagari. As archaeologists worked under a blazing Haryana sun, one skeleton stood out, female, small frame, carefully buried with artifacts that suggested status and ritual. The team collected her remains, packed them under strict contamination protocols, and sent them to South Korea for genomic sequencing. It was a long shot. Hey, DNA almost never survives the Indian climate. But against all odds, it did. The sequencing revealed a near-complete genome. For the first time, scientists held in their hands the genetic blueprint of a human from the Harappan civilization. But as they cross-referenced the data with modern populations, something unexpected emerged. This woman shared no direct ancestry with the steppe pastoralists long believed to have brought into European languages into India. Even more startling, the DNA suggested a lineage rooted deeply in the subcontinent, but also hinted at connections far to the East and even Southeast Asia. The implications were massive. Had the ancient Harapins been isolated? Or had they interacted with civilizations we've never even identified? The findings triggered a quiet storm behind closed doors. Leading geneticists from India and abroad formed a multinational team to decode what this DNA truly meant. They ran simulations, built population models, analyzed thousands of genetic samples from across Asia. The woman's genome was compared against tribal groups, northern Indo-Aryan speakers, and even isolated island communities in the Indian Ocean. Patterns emerged, but so did controversy. The results suggested that the Harappan woman belonged to a genetic population that predated the Indo-Aryan migrations, a people who may have been the original agriculturalists of the subcontinent, developing advanced urban centers long before outsiders arrived. That contradicted long-standing theories taught in schools. It challenged powerful cultural narratives. Then, delays began. The publication of the genome was postponed multiple times. Anonymous sources claimed pressure from institutions. One journal rejected the findings without peer review. A senior official hinted that the discovery was too sensitive. Why would a scientific breakthrough be treated like a national secret? 
The deeper researchers dug, the clearer it became. This was more than just DNA. It was a political and cultural powder keg. In 2019, under mounting pressure and global anticipation, the scientific team finally released their findings in Cell, one of the world's top biology journals. The Harapan woman S. genome revealed no detectable traces of steppe ancestry, the genetic hallmark of Indo-European migrations. Instead, her DNA was a unique blend of ancient Iranian agriculturalists and indigenous South Asian hunter-gatherers. This combination had never been seen before, not in this form. It shattered assumptions. The Aryan migration, suddenly, not a single narrative, but a far more complex wave, centuries after the Harapons had built their cities. The woman's genome became a genetic time capsule, proving that the builders of the Indus Valley civilization were not outsiders, but deeply rooted in Indian soil. Even more shocking, her lineage still exists today. Isolated tribal communities across South India share portions of her ancient genetic code, suggesting that her people were not wiped out, but absorbed, transformed, and scattered through the centuries. This was the scientific confirmation. Hard data, no longer speculation, but the revelation was double-edged. Because it didn't just answer a question, it asked a new one. If this is the true genetic origin of India's first great civilization, why was it kept in the dark for so long? Picture the Indus Valley 4,600 years ago. A vast network of planned cities Rakagari, Mohenjo-Daro, Harappa thriving with trade, agriculture, and astonishing engineering. Streets laid in perfect grids, sophisticated drainage systems, standardized weights. But behind this order, a mystery of identity. Who were these people? Now, thanks to ancient DNA, we know they were descendants of early Iranian farmers who migrated east thousands of years prior, merging with native foragers already living on the subcontinent. This fusion birthed a new culture-independent, advanced, and uniquely Indian. As monsoons shifted and rivers dried, the Harapons didn't vanish overnight. They moved, adapted, fragmented into smaller communities. Some migrated south, blending with Dravidian cultures. Others headed east, their influence echoing in languages, rituals, and bloodlines still present today. Their DNA spread silently, even as their cities crumbled. The Aryan migrations came later, layering language and belief over an already ancient foundation. But the genetic core? That was Harappan. The true story of India's origins was never one of invasion, but of fusion. A slow, powerful blend of peoples over millennia. And this, more than anything, rewrites how we understand not just India, but the very flow of human history the DNA that scientists couldn't release. Was never just about genetics, it was about identity, about who tells history and who gets erased from it. For decades, textbooks, policies, and ideologies painted India's origins in broad strokes. But buried beneath the soil of Rakigari, the truth waited, silent, patient, unyielding. Now with just one genome, the entire timeline shifts. The Harapins were not a footnote, they were the foundation. Their legacy pulses through the veins of millions alive today. Their cities may lie in ruin, but their blood survives. And yet, one question remains. How many more secrets lie buried under our feet, waiting for science to uncover what history chose to forget? If this story made you rethink everything you knew about ancient civilizations, imagine what else is out there still hidden. Subscribe, like, and turn on notifications, because we're only just beginning to decode the ancient truths that shaped our world. And next time, discovery might just change everything.